Craig Tarwater and I'd like to welcome you to this video on how to play great blues guitar level three and what we're going to be doing today is talking about building phrases from the pentatonic scale and you're also going to have an opportunity to play along because when I build a phrase <coughs> maybe two phrases because I can't always control myself I will stop layout, indicate so, and you guys can come in and you can build your phrase. And we're also going to be working extensively with positions because to be able to play greatly in one position and never repeat yourself because your, your lick vocabulary or your line is big is an absolutely wonderful thing to do. That's what all of our heroes do. They don't have to repeat themselves, although repetition is to some degree part of the blues. So there's a contradiction there that you can just ignore and realize that you must sometimes avoid repetition, mainly due to the lack of ideas, and <clears throat> other times you must repeat to reinforce the idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with an A fifth string tuning note a couple of times and then a 12th fret harmonic of the A after that. Here we go. The first one we're going to analyze is the one I played <coughs> coming in, which is just a slow blues in G, the one all jammers love because there's only three chords, G, G7 that is, C7 and D7. So the first place we're going to play is what's called the E form shape, third position. Okay, and You should already know this, um, I'm sure you probably do. And I'm going to try to stay right there in that position and build phrases. Okay, so we'll tip the band and here we go. Slow blues, key of G. One, two, three. Turn. 
long phrase, huh? Okay, here I go. Okay, I'll take over now. Bend the second, let it down. Okay, you try that. Okay, now on the flatted seventh. Auto. Hammer on. With a little bend on the end of it. take a little pause right here and keep an eye on my left hand and uh, we're going to talk about a few things that help to build phrases. Okay, so we know that we have these notes in our minor pentatonic scale. these notes can be modified by not using them and playing the, the neighbor notes. So we can play, instead of, we can play, instead of that, we can also do those together. And we get a lot more color that way. So when they're not part of the scale, they become what we call a chromatic note to the scale. But in reality, you're only a half step away from being right if you're wrong. And there really aren't any wrong notes as long as they don't clash real bad. Okay, so here we go just with a couple of suggestions to refresh those of you who may not have seen this before. Um, this is a great bend. It's an absolute wonderful bend. Okay, this is a wonderful bend. The first one was a whole step. This one is a half step. 
And the half step one works real good for getting into the four chord. One chord. Four chord. That's how you play the right notes. You listen to what sounds sweet when the chord changes. Okay, here's another one on the second string. One chord. Four chord. One chord. Just little things like that. They'll make you better than anybody around you. It's a guaranteed fact. Okay, let's uh, just say that that's the emotional notes is on the first two strings in all the forms. Um, on the third string, this is also real good. And so is this one. Hard to do. You may want to slide down and do it. And let's don't forget about slides, pull-offs, and hammer-ons. And, you know, combining that sort of stuff and doing bends. And also things like this, where you do a bend, play the same note. This is bent, a C bent to D. There's a D on the second string. Then, you know, you go on up to your F note, your G note. And it might be a good time to point out here that sequencing, or sequencing, I should say, playing in sequence, pentatonic scale will get you a lot of mileage if you're not bending real good yet although we would hope you would be okay let's go ahead and finish out this G up to the D form. All right, we'll rewind that for you and uh, we'll show you some D form and some C form and some A form. And we could use a G form, we'll be clear up here, we can do that too. So we'll start back down here at the D form, okay? And we're going to go through this again, and I'll lay Four out and let you play. G. Here we go. One, start on the five chord. Two, three. turn. Here's a suggestion. Here's another suggestion. phrases.
Let's go to the sea farm now. at the key of E, everybody's fun key in blues, right? We're going to start down in the open position, and we're going to show you some things with double stops, uh, fake slide, using the whammy bar, assuming you've got one that works and stays in tune when you stop using it, okay? And what we're going to do is alternate between that. We're going to move up from the open E chord, all the positions, all the way up to the 12th fret, which will be an octave higher. Okay, here we go. 12 bar boogie shuffle in the key of E. One, two, three. <laughs>
like if you want, it's just to pull off. And you speed it up. Okay, let's go to the C form, and it's your turn. As soon as we get back to the one chord again. So we're going to rewind now. All right, we'll just start in here. On the four chord, the C forms right there. Good chance on this form to play your scale sequentially, so try it. Vibrato. Great. Blues in C with a funk feel. Okay, check out the One, funk feel two, blues in the key of C. We'll start in the E form. This is where you gotta be. 
you up on your eighth notes. I might suggest the Mixolydian mode for this type of stuff. Shift to the four chords mode, back to the one chord. take a little pause right here and let's just look down here at the C chord C7 and let's examine the Mixolydian mode real quick so that we make no mistake that somebody hasn't been left out here okay this is it these are the notes the C form. Okay, now here's the A form. All your Bs in the C major scale are now B flats. That's all you need to remember. Okay, here's the G form. Here's the E form. Here's the D form. Next one will be the C form an octave higher. Okay, now we'll go ahead and continue with this little thing and watch. I'm going to use Mixolydian mode and I'm also going to go into things with the pentatonics all in the same position. Pentatonic. Okay, Mixolydian. form of F Mixolydian. More Mixolydian. that was a great job of the blues in C with a funk feel. I think you should check that section out over and over again. It'll really help your playing, especially steeping yourself heavily in the Mixolydian mode. Okay, now what we're going to do is go to a regulation type shuffle, a medium tempo one, 
in the key of A, okay? And we're going to use as many tricks as we can muster up on this one because, after all, this isn't a licks tape, it's a tricks tape. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> so that I can come back to the proper fingering in the G shape of A. halt these guys for a second that are a little over anxious. Um, the next one we're going to do is a 24 bar straight feel blues in the key of G. Okay, Now watch out for the 24 bar thing. Basically it's a double length form although you have to listen. If you came into a jam situation or just an audition situation and they threw this at you and you weren't familiar with listening to what's going to happen by, uh, you know, pre-hearing, then you could get caught off guard. So let's see if the if this band can catch me off guard. All right, here we go with this 24-bar straight feel blues in the key of G. Blues key of G. All right, thank you. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Back to our rhythm pickup.
Rise the gas note to bend in a D form. The four. That was a great job once again, you guys out there in Guitar Land, on the 24 bar straight feel. That's another one you should check out repeatedly, not just for what I was doing, but for being able to have those opportunities to slip your phrases in in between my uh, meek demonstrations. Thank you. No. Anyhow. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to do another shuffle in 12 bars, 12 measures. You all know how much that is, right? And we're going to have a recurring theme sort of a thing on the rhythm. And uh, this will be in the key of D. Okay, so you're going to have a lot of opportunity to play on this one because I'm not going to hog up too much of it. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
again, okay? Now, this time I'm going to concentrate a little bit on rhythm because this is a great one to check out just all of the, the easy ways to use ninth chords, some thirteenth chords, and I'll say what I'm doing when I do it and I'll try to finger it for you as clear as I can on the screen. Okay, here we go. Blues and D. Shuffle feel with You play all the rhythm. Theme. One, two, three, four. <laughs> D9. Just the first four strings. G13. On root. Back to D9. doing that. Don't play a chord that contradicts. He's playing seven chords, so you gotta play him too. Here's a double stop rhythm figure, Phil. fine job. Okay, what we're going to do here now is look at all of the real nice chords in the key of B flat that you can play, because this next song is in B flat and it's sort of a jazzy blues. Uh, the band wasn't really as jazzy as I'd like, but that's what we'll have to put up with for today. Okay, so we're going to start down here, first of all, and show you some chords. Okay, this is a B-flat 13. It's the open fourth string, a bar of, on the first fret with the first finger, and the third or the pinky, whichever you prefer, on the first string. And then, of course, that leads into the B-flat 9. Now there's no root in the chord, okay, no root at all. Okay, then the 4 chord, I'm sorry, the 5 chord, that's what I meant to say, the F13, F7, with a 6 in it, so sometimes they call that F7 slash 6 in your chord charts. Now, let's go on over here. This is a B9. We're not playing the fifth string. And if you want to turn it back into a 13th chord, just lay your first finger down on the bar. So here it is as a ninth chord, B flat 9. And here it is as a B flat 13 again, just by, in fact, I'm not even moving my finger, all 
I'm doing is deciding where to stop my strum with my pick. And you can turn that into a 9 sus. Just by moving your first finger. But you don't, you don't want to do that. I don't think you do. You might. That makes it actually a B flat 11 at that point. Or a 7 sus 4. In either case. Okay, now here's a B flat 9. Non root. If you've got a good thumb, you can stick it up on top. Um, or you can play it like this. Just the A flat 6 triad. But I'm not so sure. That I think it's better this way. Okay. So this is once again B flat, our one chord. So we're, all we're doing is showing you chords to use for the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Okay, here's the four chord. E flat nine. Here's an E-flat 13. Okay, so the 5 chord can be moved up here then. Then, in this particular example that they're playing, uh, they're going to go... not going to use that. They're going to use just seventh chords. So you have to watch out for that. The object being you can try your hand on these things. Also in this song, they're going to go uh, at the point that they come back to the one chord. They're going to do things like that, okay? So you just have to watch out for that. Okay, I'll explain what I'm doing here. This is this is my favorite thing. This pretty much would cover any type of jazzy blues you you do. The 13 chord on the first four strings, the ninth chord, the ninth chord that way, move to a sus, then a sus 13 to the ninth chord. Those are both four chord functions. And then back to the one, half step it, that just sounds slinky. Then here's a way of playing um, the F13. There's F9. There's F13. Here's another way of playing it where you put the, the root note on the top. And you can also play down on the four chord just a sus9, which is a straight bar across the inside four strings go down to the 13th chord, which would be E flat, with the root on top. Then, um, once again I say they do this, only they use their 7th uh, chords instead of ninth chords. But anyhow, um, that kind of movement like this, chord again. Back to the one chord. Five chord. That 
was two chord, three chord, flat three as a dominant, two chord, and five chord as a sus nine. Okay, let's try out this song. They won't be using these many sophisticated chords. Actually, before we do try out the song, let's show you a couple of lines. They're based on the B flat mixolydian scale, okay? So here they are. Almost any note in your scale will modulate down when the, the rhythm section modulates down for you. You just have to remember that, okay? Alright, here's a couple more lines. You hear I'm changing the scale to mixolydian. Whoops. Mixolydian. Each time the chord changes, I change to that name, Mixolydian scale. Here's a filler diminished arpeggio, just a short one. Here's the major arpeggio, or it could be mixolydian because we haven't gotten to the flatted seventh note. And that's called flat five diminished. Okay, let's try it out now. Here we go. A one, two, three. Starting on the two chord. The ninth chord will work for the seventh chord. The one pentatonic works real good. One pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic, works real good on the whole thing. Repeat yourself.
wonderful. <coughs> Absolutely beautiful. Well, I certainly hope that you've all enjoyed this and been able to learn something. And um, I invite you to check out the three levels of jazz to further your jazzy chops on this kind of stuff. Okay? All right. So we'll see you again in the near future. A one, two, three.